Hello and welcome to Desktop Deployment. My name's Dave and this is the first video in the new Dominion series. As mentioned in the intro video, link at the top, uh, I'll be creating a series of videos where I build and paint each unit from the Warhammer Age of Sigmar Dominion set. Um, and there will also be a couple of battle reports using the models from this set. So in today's video I'm going to be kicking off the series by building and painting um, a unit from the Stormcast Eternals half of the set, the Vindicators. I'm going to be painting these in the colour scheme for the Hallowed Knights. Um, they're a colour scheme that I personally prefer, the silver and blue over the gold, um, and also I quite like the faction from the few Age of Sigmar books that I have read. Remember, if you enjoyed today's video, please hit those like and subscribe buttons below. And please feel free to leave me a comment if you have any feedback on how to improve the show or any future content you'd like to see. Anyway, let's get started. So as usual, I clipped the models from the sprue, removed any mould lines and then glued them together. And if you're familiar with my previous videos, you will have guessed that I will be making the bases separate from the model. The models in this set have little chunks on their feet which slots into a hole in the base. This holds strong enough for me to paint them. I clip the little bits of rubble that was attached to the feet as this will make my life easier in the future. There are a couple of little chunks of plastic that slot into the base um, that are on the bottom of those rubble bits so I had to remove those and those models were glued down with a very thin layer of super glue. If you are going to do this, make sure that you use super glue and not plastic glue for this part as you want to be able to easily snap the models off at the end. So with that out of the way, it's on to building up those bases. With these bases, I want to have the look as if they were fighting over some overgrown ruins in a jungle forest area. So using some old bits from a shattered domain basing set, I cut up bits of ruined stone slabs and positioned them on the base with some cork in order to create some variation in height. Once glued down I add some skulls and some stones before giving the base a good coating with a texture paint, making sure to leave rocks, skulls and stone slabs showing through. After the texture paint had dried I fixed some sand and grit to the base using a mixture of water and PVA glue and then some small flock to imitate moss. I then glue down some grass tufts and plants using super glue before adding some fallen leaves using the PVA water mixture from earlier. Whilst doing this I go back over the sand, grit and moss with the mixture to help really stick it down. The next step I don't have any footage for but all I do is give the bases and the models a black undercoat using a rattle can. After the undercoat has dried I give the bases a zenithal highlight using white ink and the models I give a coat of dark metal colour before giving them a zenithal highlight but using a bright metal colour. In all honesty I'd probably skip the light metal zenithal step in the future as the change is so subtle it's hardly noticeable unless you're looking up close and seeing as I'm trying to achieve a high tabletop standard I feel it's a bit lost. Anyway, getting back to our bases I paint all of the muddy ground with a brown ink and then all of the vegetation with a green ink. I find it's always best to try adding the green to the base whilst the brown is still wet as you can get some nice natural looking blending and the colours bleed into each other making the base look a lot more natural. Once that's dried I go back over the vegetation with a dark green wash and then go into painting the ruined stone slabs with a sandy ivory colour, the skulls with an ivory and the rocks with a grey. After all of this is dried I give the bases a brown wash but leave out the vegetation. Whilst the bases are drying I make a start on the models. I start off by painting all of the cloth in between the joints of the armour and around the neck with a black. I then paint the shields, pauldrons and banner with a blue before painting all of the leather straps and belts with a brown. Next up is the gold which I paint on the scale mail, the trim of the shoulder pads, shields, spear and sword as well as any little trinkets that are hanging from the belts. Moving on I paint the handles of the swords, the spears and the banner and the hair of the unit champion or Vindicator Prime to give her a proper title with a black pinky purple. To finish off the swords I paint the scabbard black 
after which I paint the detail on the pauldrons, the shield and the banner with a white. Focusing on the banner, I paint some yellow to break up the blue and white and to add a bit more interest to the banner whilst keeping it simple. Going back to the Vindicator Prime, I pick out odd strands of hair with a brighter purple to add some depth and to make it look a lot less blocky. Then it's time to paint the face of the banner bearer. I start off by painting the eyes white and then painting the head with a dark browny red. As the face is drying, I paint the gemstones that are set into some of the helmets with a bright red and then paint the eye holes and the edges of the eye holes with a bright blue. I want to give the effect that the Stormcast eyes are glowing with the power of lightning. I then apply a couple of thin layers of dark skin tone to the Bannerman's face. I then build up with highlights on the face using lighter and lighter skin tones until I'm highlighting odd points that catch the most light, like the nose for example. It's then time to give all the models a gloss varnish using the airbrush. Whilst the models are drying I go back to the bases and highlight the skulls with the same ivory that I used to paint them originally and then dry brush the stone slabs and rocks with the sandy ivory. With the models dry I use white oil paint to dab the eye holes of the helmets and the eye area of the bannerman to finish the glow effect. This is the subtle effect but it is noticeable from the tabletop. Next I give the models a black oil wash and wipe away any raised areas and any area where it pulls too much with a cotton bud. As the oil wash is drying I paint the rims of the bases black and dry brush the vegetation with a bright green. You're probably wondering why I've waited until now to finish off the vegetation and the answer is I forgot and only remembered at the end like the peanut I am. Oh well, at least I remembered it before I was finished. I then snap the glued models from their bases and remove the other models from theirs before clipping off the chunks on the bottom of their feet and gluing them to the finished bases. And the final step is a nice matte varnish. Here we have the finished unit ready to charge into the battle to a chorus of only the faithful. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have then hit that like button and remember to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos in the series and remember to share the video with your friends. Please feel free to check out our Instagram account for lots of juicy pics of models I've been working on and if you want to join the DDT community you can visit our Facebook page. And as always, stay safe and hope to see you again soon.